uh, because there's two things that I'm I'm so confident about, and it's that Cody's retaining, and it's that we're getting the return of the real tribal chief, the real Throw man. Up. Throw him up. That runs the head of the table, and he is the only man that I will acknowledge as my tribal chief. <laughs> Roman Reigns is returning. Welcome back to the Burning Hammer Podcast. I'm Mark Izzo, he's Dylan O'Brien, and on this episode, we will be giving you our SummerSlam predictions. It's the biggest party of the summer. And before we get into that, we have a few announcements uh, to make. So first of all, in case you didn't know, we live tweet for Friday Night SmackDown and Monday Night Raw. So if you want to get our immediate reactions to what's happening on those specific shows, follow us on X at The Burnt Hammer. Dylan does Raw, I do SmackDown, uh, and it's been a, a lot of fun. Now, heading into August, we've got quite the schedule for you guys. So the schedule will be as follows on Mondays. Those are going to be episodes of the podcast of just me and Dylan talking about what's happening in the world of WWE. Now, we've been getting more interviews lately. So if we have an interview coming out that week, that will come out on Wednesday as an additional episode of the podcast. Uh, and then on Fridays, we will be having YouTube videos. So potentially Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays, you guys could be getting new videos uh, from us. And so I'll, I'll let you in on a little bit of a secret for our first YouTube video that's going to come out um, actually this week, I believe. Uh, we take a quiz for SummerSlam uh, right before the biggest party of the summer. So definitely be on the lookout for that this Friday uh, if you're watching this on Monday. And we've had a ton of great guests recently. Um, and those, uh, and we've sort of had a, a partnership with Dog wrestling so if you haven't checked out the last episode of the podcast we interviewed jim molino a former ecw original referee current matchmaker for dog uh, we had a great talk with him about his career in wrestling he's done pretty much everything you can do in wrestling and now he makes the matches for dog so you definitely need to go and check that out and we will be at the dog event on September 28th at Sacred Heart Church in Riverton, New Jersey, the Burning Hammer podcast will be broadcasting live from there. And then on October 18th at Pennsville Middle School in Pennsville, New Jersey, we will also be live there for the dog event. We are going to witness Connor Schaefer potentially body slam fala ba. So definitely uh, show some love to dog. And um, we hope to see you guys at the events. If you see us there and your fans, definitely say what's up to us. We love uh, I interacting with the people. Now, we've got one last announcement, and this is probably the biggest announcement that we've had in quite a while. It's something we've wanted to do um, for a long time. We just didn't think that we necessarily had the means or the funds to be able to do it. However, the Burning Hammer has merch. You can click the link in the description uh, to go buy our merch. We are going to be uploading more designs um, in the coming weeks. So if you want to help support us, uh, you can go on there. It's tpublic.com. Uh, look up the Burning Hammer. Or you can click the links in our social medias or in the description down below. You want a hoodie? What? You want a t-shirt? What? Y'all want a hat? What? You want a mug? What? You want a pillow? What? You want a phone case? What? They have a ton of stuff on there that you can get for the Burning Hammer. So again, we want to see people wearing the Burning Hammer merch, uh, and that'll let us know to keep the designs coming. So that's all for the announcements, and it's time to get in to SummerSlam predictions because 
we've got one hell of a card, don't we, Dylan? Indeed, we do. Uh, this is uh, an absolute uh, banger of a card, I would say. Um, you got, I mean, let let let's start off with you. You've got uh cody versus solo you've got guther versus damien we're finally getting punk and drew in a match face to face with seth as the referee uh we we've got Rhea versus live uh we've got bailey versus naya so th- this is this is an uh, a a huge card full of uh full of huge uh opportunity for uh for for this roster to put on an an incredible show uh this is the best uh, this is this is a really really good card for sure the best card since Mania, um, so uh, I'm excited I'm excited Mark um, I'm sure you are as well. Yeah, I'm super excited too because we've got what seven matches I believe um, if I'm remembering off the top of my head correctly. Yeah, as of right now, I wouldn't be surprised if they add a tag team title match. It's gonna be my guess. Yeah, I thought they were going. I was surprised that it's not on there yet, but I think they may do that on like the SmackDown before SummerSlam. Mm. I think there's potentially if they're going to add a match, it's either going to be the tag match or I could see them adding Uncle Howdy uh, versus Gable. Oh, yeah. Or, or maybe some sort of uh, like six person tag match with that because we're recording this uh, a few days in advance. So if any matches get added we're not aware of them at time of recording this but yeah seven matches all four world titles are on the line both men's singles titles are on the line and then we've got one hell of a score to settle with drew and with cm punk so without further ado let's dive into these predictions and let's start off with drew mcintyre versus cm punk special guest referee seth freaking rollins dylan how do you think this match is going down let me know your thoughts on it. Who's going to win? All that good stuff. So uh, my official prediction for this is going to be, I think Seth, I think Seth hates CM Punk a little bit more than he hates Drew McIntyre. Um, and I think Drew McIntyre um, has gotten the short end of the stick um, a couple too many times uh, in, in this feud. Um, I, I I think Punk currently has the leg up. Uh, so with that being said, I think that means that Drew has to... I think Drew needs to win here more than Punk does. Uh, I think Drew winning adds more to the story, um, especially um, if Seth is kind of trying to teach Punk a little bit of a lesson. Uh, so I, I'm, I'm going to go with Drew and because I think it's what's best for the story. Yeah, I completely agree. I think Drew walks out with with this win because, like you said, he needs this. He's getting he's gotten screwed time after time. I mean, how many times can he get screwed um, before he needs to just get that win? And I think that this is obviously setting up for the triple threat match. Um, I thought it was going to happen at SummerSlam, but it makes sense that we're getting Drew versus Punk now and then further down the line. Uh, Seth will get thrown in the mix, but I think. You're right. I think it's going to be a situation of Seth accidentally, quote unquote, screws CM Punk during this match and kind of cost CM Punk the match. Um, and you get a big win. Maybe uh, Seth gets knocked down or his back is turned and Drew gets like a cheap shot right to the nuts. Maybe he uses a weapon. Maybe Seth just gives Drew a quicker count than he gives CM Punk. But I think Seth's going to be involved in some sort of shenanigans during this match to then set up the triple threat match. Potentially, I don't know when they would even end up really doing that. I haven't looked at the slate. Um, I guess Survivor Series would make the most sense. Um, But I could see them potentially holding off until like Bad Blood or something. But I feel like... Because the next premium live event is Bash in Berlin, which is August 31st. Yeah. Um, and then I, I I think Bad Blood is after that. They don't have, they're not going to have one in September. Hmm. I don't think so. Isn't Survivor Series in September or is that November? No. 
November. I think okay. I think Bad Blood because uh because Bash in Berlin is August thirty first. Yeah. So I think they might be not doing one in September. That makes sense. Um but cause still could be wrong, but I'm almost almost positive that uh the uh the next pay per view is Bad Blood. After after Bad Batch. Blood. Yeah. So yeah, I mean that would make a lot of sense for them to have the triple threat match at Bad Blood. They brought back Bad Blood for I don't remember the last time that they held a Bad Blood sh- uh, pay per view. It's been quite some time, but I mean I'm really excited for this. We're finally getting the match, deal. We're finally getting Drew versus CM Punk. We've been talking about it for a while. Uh, we've been speculating on when it's going to happen. Potentially, it should have happened earlier, but CM Punk got hurt, and now he's finally cleared. Their blood has been boiling over these past few weeks, and so I'm finally ready to see these guys square off uh, in the squared circle and really just let them go at it. I'm curious to see how this match sort of like takes place about who's going to kind of get the upper edge. You know, part of me thinks that the tide has sort of shifted a little bit to where Drew was kind of the one pissed off and wasn't, I was letting the, his emotions get the best of him. But now it seems like after uh, Monday Night Raw, it seems like, all right, the tables have turned a little bit. CM Punk's kind of getting his emotion, letting his emotions get the best of him. And Drew's not going to um, let his emotions or his hatred toward CM Punk really drive uh, uh, his actions towards him. So I could see Drew kind of being cool, calm, and collected for this match and sort of like really playing some mind games with CM Punk. What about you? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think we got a sneak peek of that on Monday. I think uh, Punk is going to try to push Drew's buttons. Uh, Maybe eventually he gets Drew to snap in a way uh, during the match. Um, But I think the key to a Drew McIntyre victory, and I think the best way to do it is to have him not let CM Punk, you know, get under his skin and not let uh CM, the when CM Punk is messing with him, not let that get to him and um kind of show that he stayed cool, calm and collected because he's worried about getting the victory over Punk and doing damage to him rather uh not letting his emotions get the best of him. So, yeah, I, I think that's the best way to go, especially if you're planning for a McIntyre victory. Yeah, completely agree. Also, I don't know how much Adam Pierce is making, but my boy deserves a raise for everything that he's got to put up with on Monday Night Raw. He's got people trying to kill each other. He's got two guys trying to kill each other. He's got puppets come to life wreaking havoc on the show. Um, you think that is Seth coming out in a normal referee shirt or is he God is he coming no. out God no. coming we out are, style? We are getting a custom <laughs> referee outfit potentially all mesh see-through um yes. like it's gonna be maybe an all puffer referee outfit um i mean just something absurd uh yeah zero zero chance i'm willing to bet my life that seth rollins <laughs> does not wear a regular referee shirt yeah I-, I completely agree i'm super pumped to see what he comes up with so let's move on to the intercontinental championship because you've got Braun breakers getting his rematch against Sami Zayn. it's kind of uh what we thought was going to happen following Braun the loss for Braun at money in the bank everyone was pissed off everyone thought it was gonna kill his momentum you could have fooled me because he looked pretty damn good these past few weeks and he got his rematch and i think that he's going to get his big win at SummerSlam against Sami Zayn. um and i think this is going to be the first milestone in uh, Braun Breaker's long and illustrious wrestling career for WWE. I think that I'm also, this is like another one that I'm kind of trying to figure out how the match is going to potentially go down because um, obviously Braun lost that money in the bank, but what's, is he going to prove anything that he learned from his mistakes against Sammy? Um, Is he going to potentially be a little smarter in the ring? Because Sammy definitely didn't, uh, have his way with Braun and it wasn't easy for him to win at money in the bank. So I'm curious to kind of see like how this match unfolds to help Braun, uh, get the victory. What, what do you think? You think Braun's coming out on top? You think Sammy's keeping his title? 
Yeah, I think this is the time where uh, Braun Breaker gets the victory and becomes the Intercontinental Champion. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is, like you said, it's going to be the first... I mean, I guess the first crowning moment would have been his NXT championship reign, but on the main roster, at least, uh, this will kind of be his first crowning moment in uh, showing that they view him highly and uh, they want uh, they want him to be a, a big part of the company moving forward. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I'm fully with you. I think he's coming out with the win here. Um, and I think it's going to be, I think he's just going to, I think he's just going to overpower him. Like, I think... Braun's power is finally going to come through and he's finally just going to be like, ah, and get the victory. And um, I think <laughs> Sami Zayn is probably um, going to move on to other things. Uh, he might get like one rematch. I don't imagine him fighting back for the IC title super hard um, after this. Um, I could, I, I think Sami Zayn might potentially could even go into the world title picture a main event picture. He's he's that over and he's that good. Um so but I do yeah, I do I do think it's it's time for Braun to get the victory here. And I think that's the main reason that he didn't win at Money in the Bank cuz they're going to give him the victory here. Yeah, fully agree. Give him a, the victory at one of the big four shows and I, that's another thing that I'm curious about is like what's next? For Sami Zayn, I could see him making his way toward the title picture. Maybe he briefly helps with the Bloodline stuff um, later on, but I don't know if they're yeah. trying to keep that. That that's like, definitely a potentially. It would make that's sense. definitely an option, especially because with Bash at Berlin. And he just teamed back up with Jay uh, this past Monday, so um, it might yeah. be a way they might be starting to work him back into that. Who knows? Yeah, so and because you're also kind of are thinking about like what the matches are going to look like for for Bash in Berlin. Yeah, so it's like, definitely um, maybe he gets his rematch, but I don't know if they would do that at Bash. I guess they could, but maybe like I don't know if I I meant to say I don't know if they if he gets uh, his shot at the world title against Gunther hmm. at Bash in Berlin, because obviously Gunther is going to be um, he's going to get a baby face reaction there so um I, I think we could get potentially dragon off um potentially sheamus something along those lines for bash at berlin but that's obviously a discussion for a later date so let's move on to the other mid-card title yeah the u.s title yeah is the megastar la knight yeah is he getting his big win is this his moment dylan this is his moment mark uh, this is this is the moment that LA Knight finally uh, gets his big win yeah. on the main roster. Uh, I, I think people don't realize how impressive it is for a man to stay as, as over as he has without having like a big victory or a title win or or anything like that. Um, and the fact that he hasn't gotten uh, the fans haven't gotten bored of him. Uh, and he's still so over. Um, and yeah, this is uh this is the time, and it's time to take that title off Logan Paul. I mean, over 200-something days, whatever, two defenses, get it off him. Come on. Put it, and and this is a great, uh, yeah, and LA Knight's a great choice to to beat him for it. So, yeah, I think this is one that, this is probably the one match that I'm the most confident about. Yeah, fully agree. Um, there's no shot LA Knight loses, and if anyone thinks Logan Paul's going to win, uh, see a doctor because you're not right in the head because there's no shot that they're going to have LA Knight lose against Logan Paul. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care what anyone's theories or reasons are. It's not happening. LA Knight's walking out of there as your new United States champion because it's time. And you talk about what that's going to do for the U.S. title. I mean, it's really going to help elevate it. Um, so he'll be on SmackDown every week defending it. Mm -hmm. And I still think... You know, we saw John Cena do it. I I'd love to get some more open challenges with the U.S. title. Um, potentially, maybe even next year, this could lead to a, a little bit of an L.A. night and, and John Cena, a little friendly feud if he holds the title for that long. But um, that's another thing that they could potentially do. But yeah, we're both going to take L.A. night yeah, for this match. I feel pretty good. Um, and like you said, this is the one I feel the most 
confident about the most locked in uh, I-, I would throw the mortgage on this one uh, with LA Knight winning. So we have the four world titles um, all being defended on the show, which is pretty crazy, especially for uh, a-, a one night show. So let's start. I guess we'll start with let's do Bailey defending against Nia. Um, when maybe it already happened because we're recording this prior to SmackDown, but uh, if this comes out and uh, if if Tiff didn't debut her new briefcase on SmackDown, when do you think we get her new briefcase? Mm, maybe SmackDown after SummerSlam. Maybe they wait a little bit. I mean, you know it's coming at some point. They might wait a little bit. Um, but, yeah, it's I mean, got to be. She, like, needs one because it's broken. It got obliterated. No, I'm. Yeah, so probably this Friday. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of thinking is that they may end up doing it. Uh for us this Friday, for you guys listening, it was a uh, last Friday. But I mean, that pink briefcase, it's coming if it's not here already. So uh, let's start off with this. Do you think Tiff cashes in? Uh, no, no. I think Tiff is going to hold the hold the briefcase for a little while. Um, I think she's going to wait for her wait for a perfect moment. Um, I I fully agree. I think they're going to tease it. And I think it could be potentially what causes Nia to end up losing uh, the match. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. But um, I think we is Nia's not winning, is she? I don't think so. Um, I, I think Bailey's going to get a big baby face win um, over a big heel. Uh, so who knows? But listen, I wouldn't be that shocked if Nia did win. I'm just saying. Um, yeah, I really wouldn't be that shocked. But I'm picking Bailey, but I really wouldn't be that shocked. I fully agree. Um I, I I'm also going to pick Bailey, but like you said, I could see a world where Nia gets the win that would kind of just solidify. I feel like that would move up the timeline of Tiff cashing in if if Nia gets the win and yeah, agreed. So I, I, I'm going to take Bailey because um, I, I just feel like, I don't know, it doesn't feel like the moment. In wrestling, you got to trust your gut, and it, my gut is just like, this isn't the moment. I, I think Bailey's holding the title until Tiff, um, until Tiff cashes in. I think for, in terms of the match, uh, it feels pretty straightforward. Um, I feel like it'll be an all right match, and um, obviously if Bailey always, she knows how to wrestle, so she never really puts on um, a, a bad match. So I think we're going to get a solid match and I think we'll probably get a tease of a uh, Tiff cashing in her money in the bank briefcase. So let's move on to, to the women's world championship. You've got Liv Morgan defending her title against the newly returned mommy, Rhea Ripley. Dill, talk me through your thoughts on this match. Uh, th- this one really could go either way, right? Um, but here's my thought first from first and foremost, so good to have Rhea Ripley back. Uh, she was dearly missed. Um, she is such a staple in this women's division. Um, she is, uh, probably the biggest star of the women's division at this point. Um, and, uh, yeah, she was, she was very, very sorely missed while she was gone. So it's great to have her back and we're finally getting the Rhea versus Liv match. Um, and Rhea's injury, of course, has added so much fuel to the fire in what has been um, a pretty uh, pretty, pretty intense feud uh, between, between the two of them. Uh, so I think we're set up for a three-parter, um, whether that be now Berlin and Bad Blood or now on TV and Bad Blood. It feels like this match also has to happen at Bad Blood. Feels like that's when we get the finale of the Liv Morgan of the Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley um, thing. So it's really 
difficult to decide exactly where they're going to go. Um, but I think, I think I'm going to go with uh, Liv. I think Liv Morgan is going to retain. And gotcha. I, man, I thought we were going to disagree on this one. No, nah, I, I think Liv is going to retain, and I think Dom, um, Dom's going to help her. Um, whether we get the full on turn from Dom, I don't know. I think he might do it on accident. But I was pretty confident that Dom wasn't going to side with Liv at all. Now I'm pretty confident that he is going to eventually go with Liv. I'm pretty confident he is as well. Yeah. Especially uh, after Monday Night Raw. Yeah, I just like... Yeah, it seems like that's the way they're teasing it. Um, With potentially Finn and JD kind of turning, I don't know, with him or shortly um, shortly thereafter. But what, what do you think? How do you think it's happening? So I think... Um, I think Liv is getting the win first and foremost because it would feel pretty underwhelming to have Liv win the title off Becky, hold it for like two months, and then just have Rio immediately win it right back. I don't think it's a great look. And so I think that probably bad blood, like you said, is where it feels like that's going to happen. I think we get the turn. I mean, Dom's definitely going to help Liv. Uh, I'm not falling for that nonsense on Monday Night Raw. Um, of him officially, quote-unquote, ending things with, with Liv Morgan, especially because of what happened, um, I guess it would be like two or three weeks ago, the night that Rio returned, like Dom kind of finally caved in to Liv in the center of the ring when he was laying on top of her. Um, and who knows what would have happened if if, Liv, if Rio didn't show up. Um, so I, that's why like, I don't buy this whole Dom still with on Rhea's side with this um in terms of how it goes down man it, it feels like it's the turn has to happen at SummerSlam. you think so yeah so how do you think it happens you think you like fully just you think like Rhea's like yelling at him or something and he just like walk he just like walks out or something i think that um, it's sort of a moment where he's pretend he like needs to go do something to live to help Rhea, but then he chooses not to, and then uh, he eventually helps live by doing kind of like the same thing. And like, mm -hmm. I think we get like the full line in the sands. Uh, he I'm he Liv leaves there with tonight. Liv. You think he leaves with Liv? Yeah. Mm, very yeah. very interesting he carries probably, i mean you're probably right if as far as certain things are concerned where like SummerSlam, uh they do love making these big moments on one of the big shows um this is the last one night show of SummerSlam. starting next year it's going to be two nights um so i'm sure they're going to go out with a bang um and i think that if they had it their way, they would be doing two nights this year. Um, For sure. And so I think Triple H is trying to do the best he can to make this feel like a two night event without it actually being two nights. Um, they're starting an hour early. So I think it's going to be a four hour show, right? Instead of a three hour show. Oh, they're starting at seven? Yeah, that I believe so. Oh, I did not um, notice that. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're starting at seven. Um, but yeah, you're probably right in, in that instance where it's like Triple H really does love to have these big moments happen at the big show. So if it's a big moment and there's a good chance it's going to happen here. How, I could also see it like kind of like what you said to where he, he accidentally helps live retain at SummerSlam and then the rematch potentially at bad blood is when he gets the full turn on Rhea on purpose. And then later down the line, uh, survivor series is when Rhea could, could get the title back. But it definitely like the judgment day is coming to an end because you look at all the stuff with Rhea and Dom, you look at Seth ingrained that, uh, 
Priest needs the Judgment Day uh, in their last feud. And, and then obviously you have Finn and JD kind of are plotting with Liv in the background. So it definitely feels like everything's going to kind of like come to an end in the next yeah, few I think months. I think another huge tell is the fact that we um that we have the Wyatt six um now on Raw as well as um Gables forming like a new version of the Alpha Academy. Um they don't they don't love to have like a ton of factions going on at the same time. Um especially with how much the Wyatt Six as a faction is about to be a focal point. Um I think that like you said, I think that it's probably um it's just hard to have like a ton of factions um without them running into each other especially um so i think that's the big thing but yeah i I think that'd be one of the biggest tells is that they they really usually don't have um a ton of factions at the same time maybe a couple uh three four max on uh on a brand and i would say two three absolute max of ones that get are like aired and get time um yeah so yeah i just think uh with how much the white six is going to become like the faction of monday night raw i think it's time for the judgment day and and like i said the judgment they did its job like it it boosted damien it boosted Rhea, it boosted dom um i i would argue that it finn didn't necessarily need the boost but um he's in a better place than he was before um and definitely boosted JD. Um, it's given Carly. Carlito's been doing great work the last few months <laughs> as he's been working with them. So it will be sad to see the judgment they go. Um, and I'm sure we'll get a reunion at some point down the line. Um, but yeah, I'm thinking you're you're probably right. You're probably right. We might see might say goodbye to the judgment day here. So let's move on to to the men's world heavyweight championship. You've got Damian Priest defending against the Ring General. Gunta. Dylan, talk me through this match. Mark. Um, yes. Damian and Gunther, as well as the WWE creative, have managed to uh, put a lot of heat and passion behind this feud um, in, a, in a matter of, in a short short amount of time like two um, weeks yeah like. really and this and it feels like one of the hottest views on the card um it's i'm really excited for this match damien has potentially been doing his best work thus far as a champion of uh, these last few weeks really um I've, I've loved the work from damien and i would have told you a few weeks ago that I was 100% positive that Gunther was going to win this match. Um, and I'm surprised to say that I'm picking Damian Priest to retain the title here. Wow. Um, yeah, I, I think um, I think they've added a lot to this feud. Um, and I think when Damian does lose the title, uh, there are other there is going to be other things for him to address. Um, but I don't think this feud is a one and done. Um, I think Damien's going to retain here and get the biggest, uh, his biggest title defense thus far at SummerSlam. Clean victory. And I think he, that's the stamp. I'm, I'm a main eventer and with, with or without this title, I'm a main eventer. I think that's the performance we're going to get uh, from Damian Priest at SummerSlam. And then I think Gunther is eventually going to take the title in the rematch at Bash in Berlin. Um, that, okay. not, yeah, not I, a bad prediction at all. I would have I been, yeah, like I said, a few weeks ago, I was so sure that Gunther was getting the win here. But these last few weeks, um, I don't think this, fe- yeah, I think this feud is going to, carry on a little bit. I think Gunther getting the win at Bash in Berlin would be a little bit better. Um, and I think Damien could benefit from the win 
more than Gunther could. I think Gunther can wait a month. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what happens. But like I said, a few weeks ago, I definitely wouldn't have said this. And um, now, I'm, yeah, I'm picking Damien, and I feel good about it. So yeah, the I mean this the scale is is definitely leaning a bit more in Damien's favor, especially over the past two or three weeks after this this feud really started to heat up. Um, my only thing I, I'm taking Gunther to come out on top here, and my only thing is WWE just hates giving people clean losses, especially their top stars. So. I don't think Gunther is going to lose cleanly and I can't think of another way of him losing unless, uh, and I, I, maybe Brock returns to cost him at SummerSlam. No, I, I think, I think it's going to be that Gunther did really just doesn't take Damien serious. Underestimated him. You really underestimates him. And then I think it's going to result in when we get to Berlin, we get Gunther going big Van Walter mode, and this dude is going to just go berserk. Like he's going to be so mad that he lost that in Berlin, yeah. he's going to like be go absolute beast mode. Um, so that's my current prediction. And I think it would be a really fun thing. Um, yeah, and yeah, give I don't know, let Damien's reign go a little bit longer. Um, I think he's really, uh, I think he's really starting to prove the doubters wrong especially i mean we've been pretty big supporters from the jump but i think the doubters i think he's even starting to sway some of the some of the doubters now so yeah i mean i i could definitely see him still retaining from this because like giving gunther that win at bash in berlin would be yeah that would be pretty awesome um that could potentially be like one of the biggest pops it, it, we see for, for yeah. quite some time. Yeah, save that um, pop. I just think, I I just think that like, I I don't know. I feel like it could be a situation of where maybe Finn costs Damien, like because this yeah. is going. I to mean, go that, on. that's my thing. Is that it's this ends Judgment Day ends with a Damien and Finn feud. Yeah, and I think we I, have I one more match. I think we have one more match in the Gunther and Damien feud before that feud starts. I I could definitely see that. I I think SummerSlam is the night that the Judgment Day crumble. And, and I so think that's I, like I think when that... the first official piece comes out. Honestly, you've kind of convinced me on the Dom thing. Then I think Dom leaving is going to be like what just like makes everything fall apart. Yeah, and, and I think like once that happens, like the match order is definitely going to be interesting for for this show. Um, so if the women's world title match goes on before Damien, then I feel pretty good that like the Judgment Day is just gonna kind of collapse that night. Like Dom sides with Liv, Finn turns on Priest to cost uh Priest the title. Um, but I could also see priest for retaining and then giving gunther that that big win at bash in berlin um mm -hmm. uh, i just immediately go to like i kind of look more forward or I, I look more into the future of like who's gunther going to defend that title against at bash in berlin rather than him getting that win so that's where it's kind of like he could easily get that big win at bash at berlin or he could get a big title defense um at, at bash at berlin but um so you guys let us know uh this is our first disagreements um we we don't we usually have like one or two on these shows so it's uh, it's always good to get a bit of opposing opinions uh, when we can so let's move on to what will likely be the main event um i, I would throw my money on that that it's the main event and that's oh, going it, to be it's the main event cody rhodes cody rhodes defending his title against solo sokoa i mean if a, leader, if a six tribal chief if the six man okay. tag was the main event over the world title match then this is going to be the main event um so yeah i mean i'll say first and foremost right off the rip i got cody rhodes retaining Agreed. i got cody rhodes retaining his title that's um, the easy part 
Yeah, exactly. Honestly, the more the difficult thing to predict is how does this match play out? Like <laughs> exactly. Um you would assume KO and Randy will get involved somehow. Um do we potentially even get a Randy turn on Cody at some point in this night and then start that new feud uh because there's two things that I'm I'm so confident about and it's that Cody's retaining and it's that we're getting the return of the real tribal chief. The real Throw man. Up. Throw him up. That runs the head of the table. And he is the only man that I will acknowledge as my tribal chief. <laughs> Roman Reigns is returning. Fully agree. I, I, I or your really ones agree. up. We get Roman Reigns return. I think. I think up. the. I think the big thing is, how does it happen? Okay. Um, does it? Happen? What are your theories? Well, there's like a, there's a few options. You know, they could do the classic. They could do the classic. Uh, referee gets knocked down, and then uh, mm. whatever, like the whole bloodlines, like Holden Cody or whatever. Uh, they're about to like whatever hit him with a chair or something and then you get roman's music the simone spike yeah i i said a chair i know i it'll be a simone spike okay um but uh well he can hit a simone spike without knocking the ref down no i mean like he's hitting cody with a simone spike no i yeah but this is like post match it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay. No, I'm saying ref gets knocked down. Match is still going on. Like, this is an option that, like, the bloodline starts interfering and, like, fucking up Cody with a chair or something. Like, while the ref course, is down and course, the match true. is still going on. And then we sure. get the Roman return. You, of course, like you said, which I, I think the most likely option is that it happens... Um, after the match, I think Cody probably, I could potentially even see Cody getting like a roll up win, um, in a weird way, like squeaking out a victory, like fighting against the whole bloodline once again, basically. Um, and then like you said, maybe they're doing a post-match beat down and that's when we get the Roman return. Um, classic. I, I think another cre I think a really fun option is uh right before the bell rings. Like like these two men are staying a face off, ref's about to do it, and then and then his music hits. Solo's like, what mm -hmm. the hell? Like he's about to have his main event match. Um I yeah, I think that's a, a really interesting one. Um what do you think? How you how's the return the match then? I don't know. Like I just, just sit there and just watch the match. Maybe that would be sick. Um, that would be cool. I don't know though. I don't and know. What is, what is, what's your thoughts? <clears throat> yeah, that's the other thing. Does he he has to return with Paul, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, they get they got to return yeah. together. Um, Paul so, Heyman's walking in front of him, just like hyping him up. Yeah, bro, it's gonna be insane. Paul it's Heyman's gonna be, gonna be standing so tall. He's gonna be like. <laughs> <laughs> staring at him <laughs> smiling so hard bro he's gonna be cheesing it's gonna be hilarious what do, all right i think how do you yeah how do you think right. the roman return happens because i because i'm gonna say yeah you agree that it's we're getting the roman return here 100 percent um 100 percent. couldn't be more confident about anything in my entire life that roman's coming back tonight now i mean his original return wreck everyone and leave that was at some exactly. point so uh remember that i think like that yesterday i know uh, it was pretty crazy how that's a heel shirt it was like it was that's a heel. i will never remember <laughs> i'll never forget saying that i was like wreck everyone and leave that that's a heel shirt <laughs> i only a heel wears that shirt yeah so, that was yeah, awesome what a moment we were like freaking out about that um <laughs> but i think that man I think the first thing 
when whoever's trying to figure out how this is playing out, you need to decide. The first thing you got to decide is if Randy's turning on Cody tonight, right? Because that'll mm-hmm. kind of set up how things happen. I think Randall Keith Orton's turning on Cody Rhodes on SummerSlam. Okay. Um, I Because I think we're getting Cody versus Randy at Bad Blood in Cody's hometown of Atlanta, Georgia. So that makes things interesting because then you have to take in a few other things. I think that ref gets knocked down. Shit kind of hits the fan, right? Uh, Tama and and, and, uh, uh, Tonga get involved. Fatu gets involved. Um, KO gets involved. Randy gets involved. It's pure chaos, right? The ref's down. Shit's hitting the fan. Uh, uh, No one can get order. I I think that in the midst of all that's happening in the background, Cody's going to hit a crossroads on Solo Sokoa. He's got him fired. He's got him set up. He's fired up in the middle of the ring. And then the Viper from out of nowhere runs up behind him and RKO's Cody. And then both Cody and Solo are laying there in the center of the ring, right? It's chaos. Everyone's screaming, holy shit, holy shit. It's the craziest thing we've ever seen, man. And then the ref sort of takes some more time to to, to get back to his feet, to get his head right. Uh, Solo kind of rolls over. To, to get Cody into the pin. One, two, Cody kicks out, right? Everyone gets fired up. Cody's not losing his title tonight. So then they sort of go at it for a little bit. Randy's left. Everyone else, the Bloodline and KO, they're all just on the outside. And then Cody eventually finishes it off solo with three crossroads. Uh, and, and then he gets the win, right? Match is done. And then they're beating Cody down, right? Randy left. They're beating KO down. They've got KO neutralized. Uh, they're beating up Cody. And, and then we're going to get that moment, like you said, um, potentially putting Cody through the announce table, potentially hitting him with a chair, uh, maybe something worse. Boom. Roman's music hits. He's walking out. Paul Heyman by his side, fucking fired up. And then they get, we get the show closes on that stare down. Of Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa. Yeah, so Solo does sort of does Roman walk down the ramp? Boys down. Does Roman walk down the oh, yeah. ramp? Yeah. He walks wait, yeah. he gets in the ring. He gets in the ring. He stares does, down Solo. Does Solo try does Solo try to like hug him or something? Solo try to play it cool? Or does Solo nah. just stare at him? He He stares at him. Yeah, I think Solo's I like, think Solo's the type to, wants own. to beat the shit out of Roman. Yeah, I think Solo's the type to like own it. Like, I don't think he's scared to tell Roman like what he's feeling. You yeah, know, yeah. I, I mean, mean, he just he just did that a few weeks ago in his I promo. Knew, yeah, but he didn't do it to a, he didn't do it to his face. That's true, but I think it's like no, nah, you're right though. You're right though. Want. You can't like just say all he's that gonna stuff want to... and be like, "Hey, man." So I, I, cause like, I think it's going to be like, they go face to face, you know, solo kind of gives him like a smile and then he sort of like backs his boys up and then they kind of like sneak out of the ring and then Uh Roman throws the one up and then everyone in that stadium is throwing up their ones. You got, and then that's how the show close. (laughs) It's going to be so awesome. I'm so fired up. I'm getting goosebumps. just thinking about it. Yeah, dude, It's It's going to be so sick. Um, Probably the biggest pop in wrestling history. It's going to be one of the biggest baby That's not even- pops. I mean, it's crazy that. What did it take to make Roman Reigns the 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 biggest baby face that you always wanted him to be? Put him, make him one of the best heels of all time, uh, and that's how you that's how you make him like one of your biggest baby faces. <laughs> it's like kind of uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> shout out well, to, and it's uh, like dude Roman. it's crazy because like this is like again it's if whenever you guys are watching this you need to definitely be in the moment because this return because he's returning at SummerSlam this return is going to be one of the best returns in wrestling history so just definitely kind of take a moment to remember where you are who you're with 
Um, yeah, it's going to be so the sights around you um, and, and definitely just soak it all in. Cause this is one of those like legendary and, and iconic moments that uh, you just like, you're going to remember where you were for when Roman Reigns returns to confront Solo Sokoa to get back his head of the table. So that's going to wrap up this episode of the podcast. You guys let us know all of your predictions down in the comments below. Also let us know, do you think Roman Reigns is going to return? Me and Dylan are only disagreeing on one match. I believe I'm the defending champion um, from Money in the Bank. So I, I got tiny gold uh, that um, I'm defending. Um, so again, you guys let us know all of your predictions for SummerSlam, the biggest party of the summer. With that being said, I'm Mark Izzo, he's Dylan O'Brien, and this has been another episode of the Burning Hammer Podcast. We'll see you next week.